In today's video, we're going to be benchmarking and comparing three of the top air CPU coolers on the entire market, and I'm also going to be giving one of these away for free. Let's get into it. Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf. Today we're going to be comparing the Noctua NHD15, the Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro 4, and finally the Deep Cool Assassin 3 CPU coolers. And if you're new here and you want to see other PC hardware videos just like this one, then hit that subscribe button down below and also that notification bell. That way you never miss an episode. But before we get into it, let's quickly talk about how you can win the Deep Cool Assassin 3. Hey guys, it's editing Zach, and it's actually Movember Zach, so sorry you have to look at that. But yeah, anyway, to win the Assassin 3, all you have to do is head on over to my Twitter page at Zach's Tech Turf and find the tweet saying that this video that you're currently watching is going live and retweet it. That's it. To win the Assassin 3, head on over to Twitter at Zach's Tech Turf and retweet the announcement video tweet. All right, so before getting into the actual benchmarks, which we will indeed get to soon, let's take a quick physical tour around all three of these coolers and talk about their prices. First up is the legendary Noctua NHD15, but do keep in mind that the new Linus Tech Tips all black version of this just came out, and in my opinion, that looks way better than this one, and honestly, I really just think that this one looks trash in my opinion. Other than the terrible color scheme though, here are the dimensions that you need to worry about. The NHD15 is rocking a dual tower design just like the other two coolers, it comes with two NF-A15 140mm fans with low noise adapters if you're interested, and yet the only thing that I really just don't like about it is the classic Noctua color scheme of the fans. At the time of making this video, the normal price online of the NHD15 is $90. Next up we have the Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro 4, and now this is a CPU air cooler that would look great in a lot of my builds. It's rocking an all black stealth design which looks sick, 7 copper heat pipes, it includes two fans, and its normal price is right around $90 as well. Also, here are the the dimensions that you need to worry about. And finally, the last CPU cooler is the Deep Cool Assassin 3, and Deep Cool actually sent this one over and paid for the Noctua NHD15 because they were that confident in the performance against the Legend. The Assassin 3 is rocking another dual tower to 140mm fan design. This one includes silver colored towers like the NHD15, but there are plastic shields up at the top to give it a somewhat better design. There's seven heat pipes, and once again, here are the dimensions that you need to worry about with both fans installed. As far as installation goes, I really don't have much to say about this. All three of these CPU coolers have different installation methods for AM4, which is what I tested with, but in my opinion, it's really not that big of a deal which one is easier to install. At the end of the day, none of them are hard to install, and who really cares if one of them took like 30 seconds longer to install compared to the other one? In my opinion, at this high of a price point, absolutely no one on the planet is going to buy one of these over the others for ease of installation, so let's just move on from that. For testing these coolers, today we're going to be using my Ryzen 7 2700X that I actually had to pull out of my editing PC because this was the highest TDP CPU that I own down here in my studio right now. Now. To keep the playing field level, I decided to use the thermal paste that all of these coolers came with because that's the experience that you'll see right out of the box, and I also decided to set every single fan speed both on the cooler and inside the case at 100% max speed. Do keep in mind that all three of these coolers were tested immediately after applying the thermal paste so it didn't get time to settle in, but I don't think most of you will really care about that. With all the introductory info out of the way, let's now get into the benchmarking results, and we'll start with the idle temperatures, although I really don't think that this one is that big of a deal. Here's what all three of these tests scored at their idle temps, but like I said, I really don't think that this is that big of a factor because the plus or minus a few degrees while idle really doesn't affect anything at all, especially when all three of these produce some very low temperatures for air coolers. The next test up was running Cinebench three times back to back to back, and I wanted to run this one because that way you can see the temperatures drop in between the testing and then have to climb all the way back up really quickly. Here are the max temperatures that each of these coolers got up to, with a small margin of error, I would say that all three of these CPU coolers performed about the same. Next up was a 5 minute IDA64 stress test, and here's where you can see a slight difference in the coolers, but once again, nothing I would personally worry about. The Dark Rock Pro 4 actually produced the best results in my testing, but I've seen other reviewers get slightly different results, so once again, yeah, they're all running about the same. After the stress test, I did want to run a synthetic benchmark on a CPU demanding game, just to see somewhat of a real world application, so I fired up none other than Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Here you can 
can see that the NHD 15 did a degree lower than the other two, but all three were very cool for a gaming benchmark. And finally, the last test that I did was an audible test with my new decibel meter, which I'm actually very excited about. And I decided to test all of these CPU coolers with the case side panel off. That way you can see exactly how they compare. Here are the results that I got by putting the decibel meter right under the cooler and on the desk. Once again, this is at 100% fan speed and with the side panel off. So there you have it. As you can see from literally every single benchmark, all three of these CPU coolers are performing about the same. And I really would not stress that one of these is performing by like one to two degrees better than the other ones. In my opinion, when you're spending this kind of money on an air cooler, all three of these are going to give you the results that you're looking for. And honestly, I would focus on aesthetics at that point. In my opinion, I think the Dark Rock Pro 4 looks the best, although I would like to get my hands on the Linus Tech Tip versions of the NHD 15, like I said earlier. But yeah, either way, you just cannot go wrong with any three of these CPU coolers. Well, that wraps up my comparison of the NHD 15, Dark Rock Pro 4, and the Assassin 3. As always, drop a comment down below about what you thought of this testing or which air cooler you would personally go with. After that, feel free to head on over to one of these two videos if you haven't seen them yet, and definitely hit that subscribe button because coming up next, I'm benchmarking a game releasing this week that a lot of you are interested in. You don't want to miss that video.